Hi everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about the drug olanzapine, also known as Zeprexa. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Olanzapine belongs to the atypical antipsychotic drug classification. Atypical antipsychotics are also known as second-generation antipsychotics or non-conventional antipsychotics. Before we get into olanzapine specifically, we'll review the two main antipsychotic drug classes, which are the typical antipsychotics and the atypical antipsychotics. Typical antipsychotics are also known as first-generation or conventional antipsychotics. They are the older drugs which can be highly effective, but have a higher risk of causing side effects, especially extrapyramidal symptoms, or EPS, which we'll talk about more later on. Typical antipsychotics are used in the treatment of positive symptoms of schizophrenia, which are thoughts, feelings, or actions that are added onto a person's regular behaviors. Delusions, hallucinations, and disorganized speech are all examples of positive symptoms of schizophrenia. Atypical antipsychotics, like olanzapine, are the newer and generally safer options that show fewer extrapyramidal symptoms. Atypical antipsychotics are also used in the treatment of psychosis and behavioral problems, including schizophrenia. Atypical antipsychotics, however, can be used in the treatment of both positive and negative symptoms. Negative symptoms being things that are taken away from regular behaviors, such as flattened affect or apathy, reduced speech, and lack of initiative. The symptoms of schizophrenia and other mood disorders are thought to be caused by overactivity of different neurotransmitters in the brain, especially dopamine and serotonin. So more dopamine and more serotonin causes more symptoms. It is thought that olanzapine inhibits dopamine and serotonin receptors, so less dopamine and less serotonin should cause fewer symptoms. But keep in mind that schizophrenia and olanzapine are still not completely understood. Olanzapine is used in the management of various mood disorders, including schizophrenia. Remember that as an atypical antipsychotic, olanzapine can treat both positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Olanzapine can also be used in the treatment of acute mania or mixed episodes associated with bipolar disorder in combination with fluoxetine for depression, and more. Olanzapine is most often administered PO or by mouth, but can be administered IM in specific cases. One way to improve adherence in patients who are in an acute stage of illness and refusing regular PO or IM administration can be to administer the orally disintegrating or dissolving olanzapine tablets. A 2008 study showed that these disintegrating tablets can be an effective alternative in increasing drug acceptance, decreasing the symptoms of illness, and decreasing the burden for caregivers. Olanzapine can cause what we mentioned earlier, known as extrapyramidal symptoms, or EPS. EPS are drug-induced movement disorders, including tardive dyskinesia, which is a slow onset of involuntary movements, like sticking out the tongue or smacking of the lips. Parkinsonisms, which are the symptoms found in Parkinson's disease, like tremors and rigidity, and other dystonias. Olanzapine can also cause a rare but life-threatening reaction called neuroleptic malignant syndrome, or NMS, which presents as high fever, confusion, tachycardia, muscle rigidity, and can lead to further complications like rhabdomyolysis, kidney failure, and seizures. Yet another possible side effect of olanzapine is a granulocytosis, which is a severely lowered white blood cell count and can be life-threatening. Regular blood work may be required to monitor white and red blood cell counts. Other side effects of olanzapine include suicidal ideations, weight gain, hypotension, which may present as dizziness and headache, increased risk for falls, dysphagia, and much more. It is always important to be aware of the black box warnings for olanzapine one of which is that olanzapine may be associated with increased mortality in older adults with dementia-related psychosis. Olanzapine may increase the risk of cerebrovascular adverse events, such as strokes or TIAs in geriatric clients. Exercise caution in patients with cardiovascular disease, liver impairment, and kidney impairment, which are all more common in elderly patients. These patients may require decreased doses of olanzapine. Due to the side effect of difficulty swallowing, exercise caution in clients who are already at risk for aspiration. Remember that olanzapine works in part by inhibiting dopamine receptors. The symptoms of Parkinson's disease are caused by the loss of dopamine, meaning olanzapine use may increase the symptoms of Parkinson's. Caution should also be exercised in clients with severe CNS depression, uncontrolled seizure disorders, suicidal ideations, and more. 
Always remember to assess and monitor for the side effects of olanzapine. Watch for the signs and symptoms of EPS, NMS, and suicidal ideations. Ensure proper fall prevention is in place due to the risk for orthostatic hypotension. Avoid abrupt discontinuation of olanzapine. And as with all drugs, always be aware of the potential interactions with olanzapine, just some of which include dopaminergic agonists, other CNS depressants like alcohol, carbamazepine, and many more. I hope this helped give a basic understanding of olanzapine. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.